Hey y'all, it's Stephen Van Camp and Lewis on January 3rd, and it is a wonderful January day, afternoon, as you can see by the, the clear skies all around me. Um, it's about 80 degrees right now, so filming outside is super fun, actually. But today I want to talk to you a little bit about um, uh, Signakees Coopery, and it's that big, mature import that I got at Redland this past October, so October 2022, and it's got, it's getting pretty close to the point where I want to start watering it. Uh, of course, this is like the hardest time uh, in any catacetum, Cycnikes, catacetony growers sort of care regime is, is like holding back when you really want to water these plants after they haven't had water in a really long time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, the plant right now as it looks. I'm going to show you the roots. I'm going to show you some weird stuff on the leaves. And uh, I'm going to give you kind of a timeline for when I want to water this particular plant. So let's get the camera turned around, take it over to the table, and check out the Cycnikes coopery. All right, so here is the Cycnikes coopery. And, well, before I get too involved with manipulating the plant, I want to show you that um, you probably notice a few things right off the bat. Let me get it like this so you can see. This old growth is yellow and squishy. Now, in, in other types of orchids, this would really be a, a bad thing. Uh, but for the catacetums and cycnikes in general, uh, this is the color that the plant turns or the bulb will turn when it is it is absorbing that energy that that moisture that's held in there remember these these bulbs are storage organs right so these plants are developing these big storage organs so that they can last through the dormant period and do things like this where they they absorb these uh these old bulbs and are able to stay alive for months and months on end with with little to no water so the other thing you might notice is that this other bulb here is pretty shriveled. So I have made the analogy several times of when your catacetums and cycnikes get uh, pretty shriveled. The, the back bulbs, the, the old sheaths, start to look like baggy pajamas. And that, that's true for this especially large uh, cycnikes, I should say. Excuse me. And so we have this particular bulb being reabsorbed. This will fall off here in a couple months all on its own. And then this bulb here will probably fall off next year, next dormant period. And that's normal. But, you know, you can see that the, the size of this plant, it's huge. Um, it is, well, here's a photo of what it looked like when I got it in October. So this new growth has really taken off and just gone bonkers. And it has had no water under my care. So I got it at the beginning of October, like I said, in Redland. At the Redland International Orchid Festival. I got it from Peru Flora. And it is doing just fine. You know, with, with no water during that period. So October, November, December, uh, start of January. So, you know, quarter of a year already. And... Um, it's doing really, really well. I'm, I'm really excited to see this one bloom. Now, I had mentioned that I'm getting close to watering it, and I don't know if you can see the water drops that have fallen out of this, um, but every now and then I'm putting distilled water on the bottom of this here, and you can see there's some algae growing here because it stayed wet pretty much this whole time, and that, that's to elevate the humidity and keep that humidity up around the roots. And this this particular genus, these guys really, really like that. They love having high humidity. And if you can't provide the high humidity uh, up here around the leaves, then you can at least provide that humidity in the root zone, which is what happens here, by adding, you know, just a little tiny bit of water here in the bottom. And that's really all you need. Again, here's kind of a close-up of that orange squishy back bulb that's being absorbed and you can see the roots the roots are looking pretty good so you want to start watering these guys when the roots are about three to four inches long so you can see that they're getting pretty close and then if i peek down in the top of this media here 
you can see more roots, some of which are very shallow, like this one, they're very small, others of which are significantly longer. I saw one getting really close to the bottom somewhere in here earlier. I think you'll just have to trust me <laughs> and take my word that the roots are, are even longer than this guy. Uh, some of these are, are getting pretty close to the bottom. So I'll probably give this one another two weeks. In fact, I'll send a calendar invite to myself to hit it with water. Normally, I don't like to use Orchiata bark. This is nice, expensive bark. Um, these guys don't need nice, expensive bark. I usually use the Cypress mulch, which is cheaper, more water retentive, and rots a little faster, which is what this group really likes. They like that. They don't need high-quality bark. In fact, they don't really like it. <clears throat> so... Um, but this was Orchiata was all I had on hand when I repotted this at the apartment in October, so it is what it is. Of course, on the bottom, I still have an inorganic eco web type deal to, to keep to sit in this water well, which will get full, like I said, in about two weeks. And I'll, I will pour the water on. There's no reason, in my opinion, there's no reason to sort of spritz and spray, just start dumping the water. Um, I add fertilizer right off the bat, I add lots of water right off the bat, and they do very well. Um, the other thing that I want to show you is the extreme edema that I have on these leaves. So, let's see if I can move this here. Look at all these bumps. Looks like that's showing up really nicely in the camera, so you can see that all of these leaves are really really bumpy and um, I would say that most of my catacetums have this to a certain extent maybe not most a lot of them um, and I've never seen it ex as extensive as this so every single one of these leaves is is equally bumpy um, there's no pests there's nothing that w makes me worry um, I, as I mentioned you know edema is often thought to be too much water or um, inconsistent watering and that's not the case for this guy like I said this one has had zero water the entire time that it's been growing it, under my care since early October so I'm not really sure what causes this I've never known um, it's never bothered me so I never paid much attention to it but uh, if you know what causes this extreme edema I would love to know so please leave a comment and let me let me know what you think share your thoughts it's, it's a fascinating occurrence, and I, again, I, I just don't know what it is. You know, and you, you can see that it's, on this leaf, this leaf is fairly pleated. So it's really the outside leaves, the outside part of the leaf here, while the interior is, is not nearly as, um, as affected. And you can see that on this leaf here a little bit too. That central rib there is, is much less affected than the outer portions of the leaf. But again, I'm not too worried about it. Uh, all my plants seem to do just fine with or without it. So I am going to jump off and create a calendar invite for myself to water this one in two weeks. And I'll keep you updated with, with how it's going and what I plan to do probably in middle to end of February is I'm going to shock it into, um, into dormancy force it into dormancy, I'm going to cut its leaves off, expose it to some really cold cold weather, cold weather for this species, um, so probably in the 50s, and then, and then hopefully it'll go dormant, and then come back again in, you know, April or May, and be on track for a normal North American growth cycle. Anyway, I hope this is useful to you, let me know what you think, and I will see you later, bye. Hey, if you found this video helpful, please uh, click this little button down here on the bottom right. And uh, don't feel obligated to, but if you feel like this was worth a dollar or two, please, uh, please click that and add a dollar or two. Um, that will really go a long way to me helping to get a greenhouse right over here, as well as head over to Brazil for an orchid trip in 2024. So all of your orchid donations will go to orchid causes uh, for which I can make additional videos. And as always, thank you very much.